Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Kim with Creative Crafticality and today I will be working some more in my Holly Hobby journals. I'm actually going to be making my cover and I have taken inspiration from Gail Agustinelli here on YouTube. I will put her channel down below. Um, she just recently made a cover using an Amazon envelope and I have one of those here. She used the plastic, but I have the paper ones. And this size, I think, is about an eight and a half by 11. I haven't actually measured it. But I'm going to be taking this apart and using it this way. And I'm gonna make two journals. So I'm going to be making my journal this size. I might shorten it a little. This looks like it could be around nine inches. If it is nine inches, I'll probably just leave it this size. So that would be perfect to use eight and a half by 11 papers on the inside. But that's what I'm using. And I also have some vintage Holly Hobby fabric. This is a quilted piece that I found at a thrift store. It's really awesome. I'll just show it to you here. There's this piece here that has two Holly Hobbies and then the little holly hobbies all over and then the kind of the quilted detail here so I'm going to use a piece of that I also have some blue gingham fabric that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and then I have this vintage trim here that I really loved how that looked with it and then I have some really fat lace so I'm going to add that to the front of my on my cover and then I may pull in some vintage buttons after I put all the other stuff on it just to see what else I need on the front cover so that is what we are going to be doing if you haven't seen my other my first video where I made these pages for the journal I was using wax melts on those I will put the link for this video down below so you can see how I did how I made these pages. But I just wanted to show you those. I used some vintage Holly Hobby wrapping paper here and just made a belly band onto my coffee stained paper. So just wanted to show you that. So what we want to do is go ahead and take our envelope or yeah, the padded envelope and this actually pulls apart since it's the paper. If you have the plastic kind, you will need to use your scissors or your paper trimmer to cut it down. But I'm just going to rip this. put this gingham fabric on the inside of my cover so I'll just go ahead and lay this out and cut the piece that I need I'm gonna allow for this edge here so I'm just gonna cut move it in just a little bit I'm going to leave about half of an inch all the way around and then I'll trim it down after so I was trying to determine if I could cut both pieces in that one little section but it isn't quite long enough I am able to pull it all the way up but it doesn't leave much of an edge around so I did pull it up to cut to make the first initial cut there and then I went ahead and cut all the way across. Thank you. 
Now I'm just lining it up so I have a half an inch all the way around and I'll just go ahead and cut the remaining two sides and I did cut the salvage edge off. I left enough on the end there so that there was room to cut the salvage part. I'm just going to take my tacky glue and just spread glue all over except for the edges there. I wiped that off. I left about a half a half to a quarter inch, quarter inch to a half all the way around because that is where I'm going to be sewing and I'm not going to be waiting for this to dry. So I'm just I I'm putting glue down to make sure that the fabric stays in place while I'm sewing and it doesn't like mess up around the edges and move around. You can also use Fabri-Tac, but I have tacky glue. That's what I use on most of my projects. So now I'm just going to stick this down and try and get it as centered as possible and smooth it out to the edges and then turn it over and smooth it out as well. Now I'm going to pull my quilted piece over and find the spot that I want to be cut out. I want to make sure that I have a full Holly Hobby on the front cover at least. And I was able to find this part here where I could put the middle of the spine down on that flower section and then I would have a Holly Hobby on both sides. So I laid that down and I'm just using that piece as a template and I'll just cut around directly to the edge of that gingham fabric. Now the quilted piece has a like a batting layer, like an actual quilt but it's all sewn together from the top. There's like a pattern that's been sewn. And so I'm just keeping that. I love the way that the Amazon envelope just makes it a crinkly feel when you, you know, when you touch it and, and fold it. It's just, I don't know. I just think it's an extra bonus, I suppose. So now I'm going to do the same and put glue down on the envelope, leaving a little bit of an edge. I suppose you could use spray glue as well, but I'm not really a big fan of the spray glue on this. I'm not sure about Mod Podge, but Definitely Fabri-Tac and Tacky Glue are good. And on this, I don't need to really spread it around with my fingers because it's a thicker fabric. I did that with the gingham because it's pretty thin. So now I'm just trying to get everything lined up. And if there are some edges that are exposed, like from one side to the other, I just take my scissors and trim it. Or if it looks like it's not very straight, I just trim it off with the scissors. Again, when I'm making my junk journals, I'm not aiming for, I'm, I'm aiming for it to look kind of grungy, I guess. I love the imperfections of junk journals just because when you're pulling in vintage and old stuff, it's not going to be perfect. So. Now I added some of my lace and this vintage trim. I'm just cutting the pieces first to make sure I have the right length. And then I'll use my tacky glue again and glue those down. I could have sewn these on, but I didn't, I didn't think about that when I glued it down, but I still love the way this turned out and I do sew the edges of the whole cover so it does have that 
sewn element on. I'm just putting glue down for the trim. I'll tr put that, glue that piece down. Now I'm taking it over to my sewing machine. I'm doing a zigzag stitch at a three and a half width on it. And I'm just going the width of my presser foot along the edge. And that is about, it's like catching the envelope right on the edge. And with the with the lace, I kind of picked up that side so I could sew just on the fabric and not onto the lace part. But when I turn it, that is when I'm just sewing right on the edge of that lace and the fabric and the trim. Now just using my scissors, I'll trim off the edge to make it even. You could leave it, it's just up to you. I am making two of these books, so I am working on both of them at the same time here. I'm just checking all the edges and trimming any pieces that are a little uneven. And then I have this gingham ribbon that I wanted to add, so I'm trying to decide which side I wanted it on that holly hobby, or to the, which side of the holly hobby I wanted to put it. So I decided on the right since there was more room on that side, and I'll use my tacky glue for that. I went into my stash of vintage buttons and found three buttons. One of them was actually a blue gingham fabric button and then the other two were a blue and kind of a sheer pink. So I thought those went really well with the theme and the colors. And I'm using my E6000 just so that they dry nice and snug and don't fall off. And this is it for now guys. I am making a tassel for this to go on the spine, but if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you again next time. This is Kim with Creative Crafticality. Bye, God bless.